Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting from Tulum, Mexico. Wherever you are around the world, whatever background you come from, whatever religion, race, practice you do here in this moment, we're going to meet in the unified field of silence. And the topic of this week is about stay close or seek the company of the wise. Stay close to your teacher in turmoils. Stay close to those who are centered and they emanate being grounded, especially on times like this. Now I'm gonna get into it in details. This is a very good topic. I'm excited to talk about it, actually. For the moment, as you are sitting and just relaxing and you're hanging out in this moment, I want you to visualize that your heart chakra, your heart is opening up as if a gate, an ancient gate from thousands of years ago has been sitting here and now it's opening the gate to the light. The windows opening up, the curtains opening up, and you're opening up to light. But there is no story here. We're not accomplish. We're not trying to get anywhere. We're not trying to do anything. I want you to just relax and open your heart, open yourself, be available to light to love of God. Allah, the love, the wisdom, the knowledge of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, to enter and penetrate your being, to come into your heart. Allah, God, to come back in your life. As your heart opens up, light pours into your heart. There may, you may be feeling sensations. Maybe you feel pain. Maybe you get scared. Maybe you feel a lot of comfort and warmth. Whatever you feel, allow the light to come in and to purify you and allow the light to take your worries away, your thoughts away. And as this light is penetrating into your being, the light slowly taking over your body. Your, your heart is filled with warmth, with love. You are taken by a sensation You're taken by a sensation that all is well. Everything is okay. You are taken care of. 
God loves you. Everything you need is taken care of. All your needs are being met. All your needs are taken care of. There's nothing missing. In this moment, the love of God, the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being is here. And you're taken care of. The light has taken over your body. And now you don't have any physical sensation. You don't have a body because your body has turned into light. It's pure light. All is well. I want you to tell yourself, all is well. At this moment, all your needs are being met in your life. Everything is taken care of. Everything is taken care of. There is no problem right now. In this moment, and we're not talking about We're not talking about tomorrow. We're not talking about yesterday. We're not talking about future. We're only talking about this moment.
just hang out in this place. Hang out in this state, in this place, like you're floating, you're in the air, you're like a particle in the air, you're weightless. Your light, your love, you are taken care of. You do not need to worry about anything. Allow this energy, the presence, the presence of God to reveal itself to you. Allow it to show you its magic, its beauty, its presence, its much bigger than you and I, the presence, Her Majesty is the one that puts food on your table at night, is the one that puts a roof over your head, is the one that gives you money. It's presence takes care of you. Yet you think you are the one who's doing it, but it is taking care of you. You are 100% taken care of. The light has taken over your body. You have, there is only your presence, your consciousness, your ability to feel and think. But you have no limits. You don't have physical body. You don't have a location anymore. You are everywhere. Yet here. Everywhere and here. All together.
And now just let this light that has taken you over, let this love that you feel in your heart, the presence, the silence that you have. Allow it to wash away whatever negativity you feel that you have been experiencing lately, allow that to take it away. All negativities, everything. And as you have, your heart is open, but it's not unprotected from total expansion into the oneness with universe, your consciousness is coming back. The gate of your heart It becomes luminescent, it closes down, but it's transparent. Light can come and go through the glass. And slowly, slowly, you bring yourself back here. Your particles come back. You come back to a human consciousness. You come back to your body. and come back here. So it's basically stopping the madness of life, taking a break from the stream of the thoughts, from thinking, thinking, thinking. And it's a transformation from the head to the heart. You stop everything in your life, you put it on pause, and you just come back here. You're hanging out here. You're in this place of recognition that the presence is here. God is here because you can feel it. You come back to that. You, you stop everything and you come back. You put your story away, whatever is your story, okay? I'm a woman. I'm from Norway. I'm a single mom. I'm scared. I don't have anyone. There's a virus out there. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen in my life? What's going to happen 10 years from now? You put the story away. You put the story away 
and you come back, come back here into the presence. Even if it's for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And you come back to your center. And what happens is you remember again in here and now, in this moment, you're taken care of. There is no problem. But if you get out of this moment, you go somewhere in the future, you go somewhere in the past, then you get yourself into trouble. Then the story comes. You have left the present moment. From perfection and oneness, you go into duality. You get yourself into trouble. Because you left this moment, you went somewhere else and you miss out the magic because the magic can only be revealed right now not later not before it's always right now here is the magic here is where the healing happens if you do healing work it happens right now if you do a channeling, it happens now. If you are, whatever you do, it's always happening right now. If you're afraid, you're afraid right now. If you have pain, it's right now. But come back here and see what's in front of you right now here. And your mind becomes quiet because you're not giving it any food of the future or food of the past. You are here. And the magic shows up all of a sudden. Magic comes. All of a sudden, solution to your problem shows up. All of a sudden, you need somebody to drive you from where you are an hour away to go pick up your car from the mechanic. You don't know how to go there. You don't want to get a taxi. You don't want to get a bus. One of your friend calls and says, hi, Candace, how are you? What are you doing? I love to see you. Can I come and see you? You say, you know what? I really need to go pick up my car. I, I will give you a ride. I'll drive you to pick up your car and we'll talk together and maybe we have lunch after. Okay. A ride comes with the company and you go take care of it. It always happens in now. But you have to come here. Especially in times like now. This is a period of time that it requires being sharp. It requires to be aware and awake. Not necessarily to be aware and awake what is the government doing or the politics or blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about that. I'm not saying to go on Facebook and keep posting against corporations, against Bill Gates, against COVID, against Illuminati. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about to be aware and awake of your internal process. Am I in fear? Am I in love? Where do I operate from? Where is my head all the time? 
Am I jealous and envy all the time? Am I comparing myself all the time to other people? Am I judging myself all the time that I don't do well enough? I'm not good enough. Where are you? Self-reflect. Look at yourself. And develop self-awareness. Become aware and make a mission to bring yourself back into this moment. Come back here. So it's a very important time to stay with, if you have a healthy spiritual practice, this is an important time to stay with your practice. And this is a very important time to stay with, your, with those men and women who are wise. You stay close to your shaman of the tribe, to the elders of the tribe, to those who are wise. You stay close to your guru. You stay close to your teacher. Because everybody else around you, they're lost. They're getting drowned in the ocean. They're struggling to survive because they live in fear. They're worried about future. They're regretting their past decisions all the time. And they're in this reactionary mood all the time. So they can't bring you any wisdom. Before all they were talking about is get rid of Donald Trump. Now it's Biden. Get rid of Bill Gates. COVID. Getting vaccinated. What's going to happen? Everybody is so engaged in the world and afraid. So you find a wise one who's centered and they're not involved. They're awake, but they're not involved in the world. They're present. They're here. And they transmit that. There is the power of transmission between you and your teacher. And there is the transmission of presence. Come back here. Come back to the meditation. Come back to your heart. Come back into your center. Stay in your center. Practice that. Stay in your meditation. Bring your mind still. Come to stillness. Don't let your mind go here and there. If you see it go somewhere, you come back here. Stay here. Enjoy here. This is the only time you ever had. Don't be ignorant. There is no tomorrow. You're not going to live 100 years. If you're 50 years old, you're not going to live to 51. If you're 30 years old, you're not going to become 31. This is the only time here now. What do you have here? What's here? If you can't dive into here, you cannot enjoy here and now. It doesn't matter. COVID is there. COVID is not there. You have a lot of money. You have no money. Your body is Good, you have no pain, you have pain. You found your love of life. It doesn't matter. You cannot enjoy any of it because you have not established the very fundamental way of being. So it doesn't matter 
how many objects I give you all the money in the world, all the beauty in the world, all the health in the world. You can travel anywhere you want to go, but you're always miserable. Because the disease is in your head. You're carrying the virus in your head. And there's nobody there to help you. You go to lunch, dinner with family. You are around people that they're all afraid. Everybody talks about fear, 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 fear. Everybody's worried about what's going to happen. What's going to happen to crypto? What's going to happen to real estate? What's going to... All conversations is about that. Most families, most tribes, they don't have a wise man or a wise woman. It's a grandpa, grandma. It's a wisdom, shaman, the elder who is centered and brings you back. So you stay close to your teacher. Because your teacher is the only one who can help you find your way home. Because everybody else is lost. Everybody else is in darkness. I don't care who your teacher is. Maybe your teacher is Muji. Stick to Muji. Your teacher is Eckhart Tolle. Stick to your teacher, Eckhart Tolle. Your teacher is Guru, Shanti. Da, da, da. Stay with your teacher. Stay connected. Because they're present. They're here. They're established. If they're a real teacher then they always help you to look inside. Always look you to come back here. So this is a very important time that you keep connected to the wise ones. Papaji, my sad guru, always said, Seek the company of wise. Seek the company of wise. Look for enlightened beings. Be around them. Stay with them. Stay in their field. Let them emanate the power of love to you. Because there's so much into this place that anyone who gets close to them gets affected. You touch people without trying because you become the embodiment of love and embodiment of presence here. And no matter what everybody says, oh, wow, the world's going to end. I'm so afraid. Your teacher says, calm down, my beautiful friend. Come and sit here. Sit next to me. They put their hand on you or you just sit with them. Five minutes, ten minutes after, whew, you're back into your center. You're back home. You recognize that God is here. God is in you. And wherever God is, there is no room for dark. The dark forces have no power in front of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being. No force, no virus, no Illuminati, no deep space, no cooperation, no army has any power at the presence of the Buddha. 
all forces bow to the enlightened being. Everything from vegetable kingdom to animal kingdom to human kingdom and also angelic kingdom. Oops, I messed up my Instagram. They all bow. The biggest, most powerful army in the world, the meanest, when they come to the presence of enlightened master, to, to her majesty, they all bow. They all go down. They all put their head down. They have no power at the presence of her majesty. You have to remind yourself that. You have to remember that. So you don't get lost in this world of blah, 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 blah. This is going to happen. Oh my God, it's going to end. Oh, let me hang on to my money. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm not going to go eat lunch anymore at the cafe because I don't want to spend money. Oh, I'm afraid. Remember who you are and come back to your power. And then freedom comes to you. It doesn't matter where you are. Gurdjieff, I don't know who knows about Gurdjieff. Gurdjieff, yeah, great. He was an awakened master during the 30s, 40s, he was in France during the occupation of France by Nazi Germany. But Gurdjieff was free. He was still doing everything he wanted to do during the occupation. He would disguise himself but he still had his meetings with his disciples. He was still teaching. He was still doing everything he wanted to do. But he would shape shift and become invisible. But he did everything he wanted to do. And he didn't live in fear. Ramana Maharishi the teacher of my teacher, who I call my grandfather, is my spiritual grandfather. Ramana Maharishi lived in southern part of India from 19, like, 10 to 1953 when he died. And so there was second world, there was first world war, second world war, there was the British occupation of India. It was during Mahatma Gandhi, a lot of big people. And Ramana was in his ashram, he was always just lying down, just relaxing, very mellow. People would go to him and say, great Ramana Maharishi, Japanese may invade India. Ramana Maharishi was just sitting there. Great Ramana Maharishi, Germany may invade India. Gandhi is coming to Tiruvannamalai. You know, maybe you should talk to Gandhi. Maybe you should say something about India rises against the British Raj. Ramana Maharshi was not interested in any of it. He was centered, he was silent, 
and hundreds of thousands of people sitting around him. They were like sitting under this huge banyan tree, enjoying the shadow of the tree. They were drinking from the presence of a living avatar, living master, emanating peace. He had no interest in getting involved with the world, with politics, with anyone. He was like in the center of himself. And now the time requires you to do that if you want freedom. More than ever before. It's so obvious why God has created this pandemic, why God has created, why existence created. This is not man creating it. Because there is no man capable of creating anything. It's only Her Majesty. It's only the Supreme. It's the will of the Allah. It's the will of God that things happen in life. If God doesn't want something to happen, it's impossible for anything to happen, no matter how hard you try. Do any jumping jacks you want to do. That thing does not happen unless it's the will of God. And why is created this pandemic? It's a perfect time for us to awaken, to use this pandemic to go inward, to go inside to discover the truth of who we are. Who am I? Am I this body? Am I the first name and the last name that my parents gave me? Am I my thoughts? Am I the way I feel? Who am I? Ask yourself that question. When you're sitting in private, in meditation, ask yourself the question, who am I? Who am I really? Without your story. And see who you are. See for yourself if you were really born. Were you born? Did you have a birth? Examine that. And will you really die? Examine it for yourself. Not just I tell you, I'm giving you the clue. But you have to figure that out. So if I'm not never been born, then I can never die. Therefore, I'm always here. Here, I am, I am, I am. Presence. Because where could your consciousness go if you die? Where is it going to go when you're I am? Not I am Shadi, not I am Kani, or I'm Monica. Not those. I am when you're in meditation and there's no thoughts. There is only your being 
here, present, without any story. Where would that go after your body dies? Where do you think it's going to go? So come back to that. Even if it's too much for you right now to grasp it or get a grip of it, this is too much, Zarathustra. I can't handle it. Just come back here. Get into the practice of being here. Incorporate that in your life. Disconnecting from the past, disconnecting from future, disconnecting from your work, from your boyfriend, girlfriend, kids. Disconnect and just hang out here and examine the quality and the richness of here. Examine it for yourself. Find out for yourself. Because I can't. It doesn't matter how much I tell you. It's nonsense. The best I can do for you is to encourage you to examine it for yourself and discover it yourself. Because once you discover it, it's yours forever. No one can take it away. All right. Anybody has any? There's a couple of comments here. Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Wise Words. I have another appointment, so I have to leave. Here's a gift. Okay. I says I have to leave in 45 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah, if anyone has to go and come back, welcome to. Thank you for letting me know. So, any comments, any questions? Miss Candace, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. My dear. Um Yes, it was the comment you just made a minute ago about once you have this, nothing can take it away from you. Okay. I notice in times if I, there are times when it seems to go away and I can't find it. Um, they're brief, but one of the, you know, things I worry about is like about the vaccine is um, that that could take it away if we have to be vaccinated. Okay, so if you get vaccinated, it will take what away? My connection to Her Majesty. My, my ability that, to, to be in that space of such love and peace. That's impossible. That's what I want you to tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's Nothing impossible. Can ever take away. Because it's Her Majesty that has chosen you to show herself yes you yes, haven't done has. anything <laughs> you and i have not done anything to earn that it's her majesty that decides she wants to show herself to you if she decides to hide from you she will. And you will go back into ignorance. But if she wants you to see her, which she already has, then the love will get stronger and stronger. No vaccine, nothing can come in between. Because the love of God is more powerful than anything else. Well, I hope she doesn't decide to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Oh, good. <laughs> for that to happen. Good. Your head is in the jaws of the Bengali tiger. Your head is already in there. The tiger is going to eat the rest of your body. You have already been spotted by the guru. The guru has in, 
impregnated you. You already got pregnant by the master. Now, the, the love will keep growing and growing till give birth. So there is no way out. You can't go back. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this up. That's another thought. That's another trick of the mind that will throw this, a curveball. So it creates something that doesn't exist to keep you separated. And then you come back to satsang. You come back to the academy and you remember again, you come back home. Good, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you brought that up. That was a great one. Thank you. Let's see, we have a message here. Okay, yeah, anybody has to leave, feel free. When you have to go, go, don't worry about it. You don't need to, I appreciate you letting me know. Um, but if you have to go, go, it's fine, I understand. Anybody else has any comments, questions? Yeah, go ahead, Lauren unmute yourself yeah so i was wondering back in the beginning that you had mentioned staying close to the wise staying close to wise people or keeping wise people around you and i think the first place my mind went was to you know like people who are wise in business people who are wise in spirituality just wisdom in the most general sense um, right. and i was wondering if that if you were referring to that at all yeah no, I'm referring to the awakened beings, spirituality, those who are in their center. And that's how they operate from their center. They're, somebody could be a carpenter, they could be a businessman, they could be a nurse or a mom or unemployed. But they, they have realized the truth. So they don't get involved with the blah, 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 the news, you know, with the stuff. They're, they're, every time you go and hang out with them, they're here. And then not just blah, 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 be here, not like pseudo spirituality, like you're meeting all these kids and they just, I'm, na, 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 na. I'm so here, I'm no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. They are here. And you can't go anywhere when you're with them. Because they're so here that it forces you to be here. And they remind you that. That's the wise ones. They've recognized that the world that you see is not real it's relatively real but it's not real so they don't get involved with it go ahead please i have a follow-on question i was wondering why are there so few enlightened people and so many people who are not right the there is different ways of putting it, but this is an answer to satisfy the inquiring mind. So if there is something as evolution, if there is a school that life, we enter into life and we have to evolve from this, to a higher level of consciousness. Then we need a place like this to come to that is made out of duality, to experience being betrayed, to betray, to cheat on someone and someone cheating on me, to kill somebody and to get killed, to love, to hate. All aspects of duality 
that needs to be experienced is being experienced here by the oneness, by God. That's one way. So we don't want to destroy the school. We don't, we don't want to have a utopian world because then there is no school. We cannot experience drastic measures in life. That's one way of exp explaining it. Another way of explaining it is that imagine you're omni omnipresent and you, you are God, which you are, but we're talking in a matter of speaking. So you're the complete oneness. Then there is no one. When we talk about oneness, in oneness, there is no other. So if you have reached complete oneness with God, you're not even aware that you are anymore. There is nothing. See, it's either nothing and there is no one. So it's zero. One doesn't exist. And there is two. There is no one. The oneness we talk about, it's a fairy tale that we talk about because we want to become one. Well, if you become one, then there's nothing to compare yourself against because there is no two. So how do you know you became one? You can only say I became one because there's something else to compare yourself against. In oneness, there is no Lauren to say I became one. Lauren is not there anymore. It just is. Lauren is everywhere. Lauren is everywhere. So imagine that you are the one. And a million years, two million, ten million, fifty billion years go by. Hundred billion years go by. And one day you're just bored. You say, you know what? I one. I want to appear as others. So it's like consciousness is like an ocean or a lake, which is completely flat. There is no waves. And the lake is not aware of itself because that's the only thing there is. It has nothing to compare itself against because there's no beach. There's no mountains. There's no sky. It's only lake. So it doesn't know. A little wind comes and there's a ripple and there's a wave starts to rise. Rise, the wave rises, falls down. Now the lake is able to see itself as a wave. So what I want to say is, again, these are concepts. This is conceptualizing the being and how manifestation happen. So we can understand it with our minds. But even when I t what I tell you is not what is. This is only in a way of explaining it. So consciousness at rest means no waves. It's only the oneness. After 100 million years, it shakes and it moves. And in that moves, different waves starts to appear. Now these waves are seeing each other. Means consciousness in movement creates individuals. These are all expressions of the one, every single person is an expression of the oneness. 
So God, by moving itself, moving the water, all of a sudden these people appear to be, these buildings appear to be, wars are there, peace is there, because I'm omnipresent. I have all the power in the world. I can be anything I want. Okay. I'm going to try to be Jesus Christ and angels. I do that for 100 million years. Now I'm bored. I don't want to be an angel. I want to be Al Capone. I want to be a gangster. I want to go kill people. I want to go rape people. Because I'm bored of being... Jesus all the time, 100 million years. Now I want to be the bad guy. So now I manifest. I appear as the bad guy. And I appear as the good guy. Here is Hitler. Here is Jesus. Here is, let's say, Saddam Hussein or George W. Bush. Here is Mother Teresa. I can be both of them simultaneously. If you can be many different things simultaneously, wouldn't you want to experience it? You can be Lauren and you can be an eagle flying in the sky simultaneously. And you can be a fish in the ocean. Wouldn't you want to experience all of it? Or you just say, oh no, I only want to be Lauren, wake up in the morning, drive, go to work and come home. Don't you want to fly? Of course I want to fly. I want to be a big, bad ass eagle who can fly. I want to be a shark. I want to be a dolphin. I want to be a snake. I want to experience everything. I want to be an aggressor, someone who's aggressively attacking to kill. And I want to experience getting killed. And we have experienced that in all the lives we have had. So God as omnipresent is experiencing itself. It's always experiencing itself. Does that explanation satisfies or explains? It makes it a little bit easier. Lauren? It does. Thank you. So the bottom line is if I have all the power in the world, and I can be different things simultaneously, why should I just limit myself to one thing? How many times you guys have thought, God, how would it be like if I could fly? Can you imagine if you could really fly, I don't think you need to work anymore. And you, you don't have to have a condominium or a house because you can fly and you can fly anywhere you want. You just land in somewhere, spend the night there, sleep, and the next day just keep flying, going to the... You don't have to work. We're so limited. I think birds feel sorry for us. When birds look at us from up there, they say, oh, these poor human beings. I feel pity for them because they always have to walk, crawl on the floor, on the ground, or drive. They're limited. Birds can fly all over. So if I'm going to come back next life, I want to come back as a badass bird. I'm strong. I can fly. I'm mean. Everybody's scared of me.
Yeah, beautiful. Uh, from Tan uh, Tanya, right? Tanya. There's a beautiful German book called Birds Fly Without Suitcases. Now imagine you're a bird, you don't get cold. Look how we are. I mean, as soon as it's a little bit cold, I'm miserable. As soon as it's a little bit hot, I'm miserable. Anyone else? Anything else you want to share with me? Any questions? Any? Can I ask you something? Please go ahead. First of all, hi and namaste. I'm yeah, very namaste. happy to be here. It's my first yeah. time. Welcome. Are you are you from Germany? I'm from Germany, yes. Yeah. Where in Germany? Near Frankfurt. We've actually met in Frankfurt. Well, um, I thought you look familiar. So yes. we're probably uh, at the Frankfurter Ring, at one of the Frankfurter uh, Ring, yeah, yeah, Frankfurter Ring. That's yeah. so great. You remember? Um, yes. At at this point in time, with Corona and everything going on, um, I feel like there's such a lot of grief and negativity, and um, I'm starting to wonder if um, there are so many light workers who say, no, you just need the light, you just need the light, and uh, just throw light at it, something like that. And I, I'm beginning to feel that's, that's one part of the story, that's one side of the coin. And people do not tend to tell us about the other side of that coin. Um, right. About the darkness. And, and I yes. mean the literal not godly part of the universe yeah um, can can you say something about this please yeah absolutely uh first of light first of all from the time you're born you come into this dimension of duality so anything in this life any kind of object has its opposite too. There's man, there is woman. There is day, there is night. There is good, there is bad. There is love, there is hate. Everything in this dimension that we are in, it has its opposite. And it cannot exist on its own independently. Like, if there was only light, then you would never know there is light. You would get bored after a while because there's nothing else. So light needs darkness. And where there is light, you see shadows. You turn on the light somewhere and you find a shadow. So they both need each other to exist because then it becomes meaningless. You would want to shoot yourself after a while because you get so bored. The opposite is needed. Now, one may say, why existence created so many ignorant people? But know that also existence has created awakened people too, to offset the ignorance. Why existence created bad people? And there's also a lot of good people in the world. There's a lot of people with open heart. They're loving, they're giving, they're caring. We meet them every day. We come across people that, we come across all kinds of people. We come across people who are assholes. They're mean, they're self-centered. They want everything for themselves. And you meet people that they're caring, they care, and they're giving. They're all here. 
So back to your question, question answering it. It's very annoying. Yeah, you come across, again, the light worker or the spiritual seeker who's only talking about light, light, light. There you can see that they're in their beginning of spiritual development. They're not advanced yet. They're newbies. They're learning new things from here and there, and they keep, keep repeating it like a parrot. But the more you get advanced in your spirituality, the more your consciousness expands and you realize yourself, the more you realize that, A, I am all there is beautiful, I am all there is ugly. I am total. Everything is within myself. As much as maybe you look at me as a spiritual teacher, Zarathustra is full of love. Equally, Zarathustra carries dark. You don't know me, and you're not with me every day to know that. But I know, I know my dirty mind. I know my dark mind. I know my dark thoughts. You don't know it because you can't read my mind. But I carry both, both light and dark. Am I capable of doing evil stuff? Yes, I am capable of doing evil stuff. So are you. You just don't want to admit it. So what do we do? I have light and darkness inside me. But at one point, you have to rise above your dark and your light. In order to rise above your darkness and your light, you have to first accept it that you are both Hitler and Christ. I'm not different than Hitler. I just don't have the power. Give me the power. Maybe I kill more than 6 billion people. Did you know that? Because there's a lot of ignorant people in the world I don't like. If I could get rid of them, let's fucking get rid of all of them. Let's just burn them. I have that in me. Do I ever think about it? Yes. Do I ever want to kill people? Yes. When they annoy me, I do. You're getting uncomfortable. What is he saying? He's full of love. Why does he say these things? I say these things because it's true. I have the dark in me. The seed is inside me. And I have the light in me. The seed is inside me. People say that money corrupts. People say that if you get a lot of money, you get corrupted. No, the seed of corruption is inside me. It's not that money corrupts me, it's because I carry the seed within myself. Money is only watering it, and it let it grow. So all of these are within all of us. You know why it's within all of us? Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why you carry Hitler and Christ in you, every one of you? You know why? Because you're one. Oneness means all the good and all the shit is there. 
You can't just have all the good. Oh, I just want to become one. Becoming one means that you're one with the murderer and you're one with the saint. That's what one means. All of it. You can't just say, oh, you know what? God, he had a bad stomach. He had an indigestion. When he created Hitler that day, he took a big fart. And Hitler was born because that was a bad indigestion. No. As a German, I can tell you, Hitler was not crazy. And saying oh, that no. he was crazy is actually um, being mean to crazy people. <laughs> um, Hitler was also... I'm, I'm using it as a metaphor. Mm. I never met the man. I don't know. But anyone who's able to bring all these people around them, they must have some magic. The guy must have some magic. He must be very smart to be able to have all these intelligent, highly intelligent, highly educated German culture in 1930s, 40s, all these people, Christian community, all these officers are following him. He must have something. He was and if I can go and sit with him and take some courses, I would do. Because the dude knew how to have people follow him. Believe me, any spiritual teacher in the world you know, all these famous spiritual teachers, they would love to spend a week with Hitler to learn how you can have people follow you. So I don't think it was crazy either. I'm only using it as a metaphor. But I'm saying that the dark and the light, they're all within myself because I am one. Now, once you recognize it and you accept it, first you have to admit it. So you're no longer in this denial. Like what you're talking about, Tanya, about these light workers talking about light, 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 light. They're in denial. So first you have to come out of denial and recognize you have the light, you have the dark, and then rise above that. You have to rise above your darkness, the darkness in the world, and the light in the world. You have to rise above it into the oneness. You have to go beyond that. You have to go beyond judging yourself. You have to go beyond judging life, mind judges, to give yourself a chance to rise to a higher level of consciousness. You have to go beyond this is good and this is bad. This is right. This is wrong. You have to go beyond that. You have to throw that in a trash can. When you come to awakening, then you know what is right and what is wrong. Before awakening, you're like a little kid in school. They have to tell you what is right and what is wrong because you have not developed your intuition. Tanya, I caught you off. Finish what you were telling me. I want to hear more. Um, I was thinking about this whole light and dark. Um, I've been thinking yeah, about it. You... Sorry? I've been thinking about this for two months. Um, I don't know if you're interested to hear it. I don't want to steal from everybody's time. I'm... <laughs> I apologize. I had something was making noise. Turn it off. No Go problem. ahead. Are you say it again? Um, I'm a I'm a channeling medium, and um, I have always had the typical guides. You know, all these light beings. Um, 
And then I stumbled upon uh, Anubis, the god. And uh, he talked to me for two months straight now, November and December. Okay. And he is, well, a low energy being. He is the prince of hell and everything you associate with that. He's not the devil, by the way. Um, and this is where all my questions about light and dark come from. Because while he is a great teacher, uh, and we talked about life and death uh, so much, um, I'm, I'm wondering how, do I get this wrong? Do people get this wrong? Or am I just going crazy? I mean, it has to be <laughs> something yeah. like that, right? Um, and I just, I just can't understand the, the scale we're operating on because everybody says there's negative energy and you, keep, you yeah. need to keep away from that right. at all costs. Right. And Anubis says, nope, no, no, I am zero. And that's just that. And a zero is not evil. Zero light is not evil. It's just zero. Well, okay. First of all, from what I have discovered in my short time on this planet, I realized that there is no good or bad energy. Energy is energy. It's like electricity. There is no good electricity or bad electricity. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, it's all electric. You use electricity to have a refrigerator and your refrigerator is doing you good, keeping food cold from getting bad. You use electricity to turn the toaster on, to charge your computer, watch TV, um, whatever everybody does. And you can use electricity to electrify people and kill them. Or you can use electricity for 5G technology that is putting radioactive waves out there or whatever. Electricity is electricity. Same thing, energy is energy. And yet maybe there is a lower vibrational entities or beings and higher vibrational beings. But we, uh, we like to use the word energy. That person has bad energy. If you stay in your own center and recognize who you are, everything would reflect back and nothing can touch the truth of who you are. People who worried about low energy people or bad energy people is because they're in the infancy of their spirituality. They're in the beginning of learning A, B, C, D of spirituality. I hope I was able to help. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. When you get a chance later on, would you send me an email? Yes. My email please. is <laughs> info <laughs> at zaratustra.tv. Would you? I, have a, I want to ask you a question, but it's a private question. Absolutely. I will do Thank that. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Yeah. Info at zaratustra.tv. So we're getting, well, anyone else has any question or anything you want to share or any comments while we're here? No. How about this retreat you were talking about? Do you know anything about it? Or is no, there... it's just, I just, Baramji, I invited him to, do you know Baramji? You haven't met. Hilde, you met Baramji, right? 
Yeah. I've, I've never did. met him, but of course I know him. Right. Yeah. So, so I have invited, legend. I've invited him to come and come to, uh, come to Tulum as my guest. And when he comes, magic happens. The two of us come together. And uh, because, as I mentioned before, I'm very non, very much non-motivated these days to to give to put workshops or classes or locally to do anything. I don't have any motivation to do anything. So I thought if Baram G wants to come, he likes to come and visit. And once he comes here, maybe I get going too, you know, maybe it wakes me up. And if that's so, I like to put a retreat. And uh, because I also need to work at one point in my life, you know. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if you don't have to work. It's nice to, to eat, work. You have to eat at one. <laughs> I also have to eat. So, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, and also, of course, you know, when I'm around people who are into it, I get motivated and I like to be creative and create. So, but maybe I put a retreat, you know, maybe we can bring 10 or 12 people from all over the world. And uh, in that retreat, I can take you into the depth of yourself. I take you to help you to recognize the the presence of Her Majesty within. And sometimes you need to create a pressure cooker. Sometimes you have to create a situation than just online because it's beautiful. We do the online work, but then I don't know what you do afterwards and you may just go do your own thing. But if I have you to myself for 10 days in the unified field, then I can keep pushing you to go deeper and deeper and create the environment for you so you don't go get involved with the TV or anything like that. You're just deep inside yourself. So when is that going to happen then? Do you know that? I don't know. I'm discovering everything cool yeah do that all right yeah i'm discovering i don't know at this point i you know there's a lot of variables happening so i don't want to come up with any dates yet then i'll be committed all right so we're coming to the end of our academy I thank you for joining me. The next academy is going to be next uh, Wednesday, same time. My social media pages is Zaratustra 5D. My email is info at Zaratustra.tv and my website is Zaratustra.tv. Feel free to send me a message. Basically, best way is to send me an email. And uh, until then, I send you a lot of love and light and uh, blessings. Stay in your heart. Stay in this moment. Stick to your practice and don't let your mind go anywhere. All is well. Everything is in good hands. Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, is taking care of everything. You don't have to worry about it. You're not in charge. Let God take care of business. Love you very much. Namaste.